Now you work a lot with Lex Luger on the album, you know. Uh, do you feel like he fits your persona best? No, nah, that's Dr. Dre on Snoop. That's who that's your first option. Damn near the last. Butter. <laughs> Butter. Lex Luger. When someone impacts anything in life and isn't properly credited, one of my favorite sayings is, winners write the story. You don't even have to necessarily lose or be a loser, but if you land on the wrong side of the quote unquote winner, you could be written out of the story. Lex Luger is one I feel is written out of history. Someone who created a template and everyone else ran with it and faintly mentions his name. Today, let's explore the ups and downs of the career of Lex Luger. What up though? It's Lex Luger, you know what I'm saying? Born in Suffolk, Virginia, but mostly known for his impact on the Atlanta music scene. Lex Luger was intrigued by the art of sound making at an early age, starting off playing drums at church. Lex would form a production crew with high school friends and would start to hone his craft on a program named Fruity Loops. Believing in the talent he worked to develop, Lex would drop out of high school in only the 10th grade to fully pursue his dream. At a time when artists were blowing up on MySpace, Lex would begin to email artists on a social media platform, but nobody showed any true interest. Until it was 2009 and an unknown rapper at this time named Waka Flock of Flame would respond. Waka at this point had just released his debut mixtape, Salute Me or Shoot Me, and started to run with Gucci Man's label, 1017 Brick Squad. Hit him up on my space. I sent him a gang of beats. And um, you know, in the email he put your number, whatnot. Yeah. So he called me, like, bro, he was like, Man, you made me find my sound. I'm mm -hmm. about to I'm about to do a whole album with this sound. Yeah. Walker took a liking to Lex's beats and used three of his instrumentals on a follow-up mixtape. Salute Me or Shoot Me Too. One of the three records ended up being Hard in the Paint, which at the time was just an underground hit. The reception of these three records had Walker wanting more of this sound. In his own words, he wanted Lex to be his main producer. He felt their chemistry was similar to Snoop and Dre. Building up rapport over the phone for a few weeks, Walker offered to fly Lex out to Atlanta and help shape the sound for his debut album, Flock of Hell. Struggling with money in Virginia with his daughter, Lex took the chance and stayed in Atlanta for a month. That, that, yeah, that moment hit me, bro. That yeah. shit just hit me. That shit about to, I'm about to enter a whole nother world. <laughs> <laughs> During this time period, Lex will start to meet other producers on the rise, including names like Southside, London on the Track, and TM88. Southside and Lex will work on shaping the sound of Flock of Philly and start to build a bond with one another. Who would y'all pick as the number one producer of all time? Sizzle. Who that? Sizzle, Southside. Southside. Lex Luger. <laughs> Come on, Walker Star Power started to grow at this point and his song, Oh Let's Do It, will start to take off on a commercial level. But for Lex, despite spending time working on Walker's album, he was about to have a second kid and had no money. He had momentum from the mixtape records. They were gaining traction, but no money to show for it. Things got so bleak, he started considering getting a job on the side at a warehouse just to stay afloat. Luckily for Lex, the second commercial single for Flock of Ellie would be hard in the paint. And by May 2010, he would hear his beat played on the radio for the first time. You hear that? Turned it up, man. That, that felt crazy. Finally, he started getting real money for his production and was signed to Waka Flocka's mom, Dad Anthony, who had a management team at the time. She helped facilitate the start for artists like Waka, Gucci, and Nicki Minaj. Outside of the mixtape stratosphere, Harden and Paint started to gain traction. Other artists in the industry started to call Lex to get a piece of the sound, leading Lex to make beats for Rick Ross, BMF, and MC Hammer are some of the first songs they did together. Kanye would call and offer to fly Lex out to New York to work on his album. My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. When Lex arrived to the studio, he met Kanye, Jay-Z, and Beyonce. Kanye had the groundwork done for the bonus song on the album, See Me Now, but felt Lex's drums would complete the record. Kanye eventually told Lex that he and Jay were working on an album called Watch the Throne, and Lex played beats for the duo. Kanye and Jay would take two beats that became the songs Ham and Illest Motherfucker Alive. Illest wasn't even a Lex beat, it was a Southside beat that he mixed in with the beats that he played for them to give Southside that opportunity. I ain't never really get to go to the sessions. Like, that was more of a, like, you know how I really got to watch the thumb placement on some G shit? Mm -hmm. I ain't never really telling nobody this. This nigga Lex Luger just took some of my beats and sent the beats when he sent him. Mm -hmm. He sent my beats with it, you feel me? Like, I'm from like, man, y'all gonna do some of my brother beats too. That's amazing. Yeah, so, and they end up doing this, this motherfucker a lot. What was that? And like? Lex texted me, yeah, texted me. He texted me one day, like, two months later after he sent the beats and was like, hey, he like, bro, I got a surprise for you. So I'm like, what? I'm like, what's up? He like, man, Jay-Z and Kanye did one of your beats. I'm like, damn, that's fire. Like, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to that boy Lex. Walker seen the chemistry with the two, and they thought about an idea to create a production team. They eventually came up with the name 808 Mafia. Southside would bring along Atlanta producer TM88. Lex Luger wasn't too fond of the Mafia part of the name and would decide to distance himself from the idea and focus on his own career. At only 19 years old, 19, 
Lex was now making connections with notable artists, seeing success and fully engulfed into his new lifestyle to his own detriment. In his own words, Lex would say he was trying to be bigger than what he was and started to work 10 times harder. Using pills, he started to skip out on sleep and create more sounds, spending up to nine hours a day making beats. Four or five in the morning sometimes, just going to the studio, boom, making beats. It's about 10, 12. Go back, go to sleep, chill with my kids, with my family, you know what I'm saying? Go back to the studio, make some more beats. Come back home, do the same thing, go make some beats, like that's it, you know what I'm saying? It's my job, basically. Lex Luger went on to win Producer of the Year at the 2011 BET Hip Hop Awards, beating out other producers like No ID, Kanye, and Justice League. 2009, he could barely get a placement. 2010 through 2011, he produced over 200 songs on either albums or mixtapes for multiple artists, all before he was 21 years old. Despite him having the sound of the moment, critics started to take shots at Lex by saying his beats sounded the same and had no diversity. This started to make Lex overthink his beats and creative process. Dude, I had got so depressed and, and insecure almost, man. Just trying to reinvent myself. You know what I mean? Just just going against the grain. Just, you know, everything that I had built up and created, you know, I just felt like I had to scrape it, you know, just tear it down and create something new. I had to just come out with new genres and new sounds that nobody had ever heard of. When I came in the game, bro, all the old producers was hating on me, saying, you know, I wasn't a real producer. He's just making beats on a computer. It's not real, da 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 So, yeah, like, like I had a lot of epiphanies and shit, man. So I did for a long time think that I had to, like, reinvent myself. And the process that garnered him so much success started to crash. Lex was working himself to the ground. In his own words, life became sort of a loop. The use of drugs and alcohol and lack of sleep was originally done to keep up his work rate, but it started to take a mental toll. In 2012, Lex produced round of applause for Walker's second album, Triple F, and would disappear from the mainstream for years. It was the experience of altering, like just changing my reality. It, you understand what I'm saying? It wasn't about which one it was. It would give me anyone. I'm just not playing with my nose and the needle, like I told you, but. Yeah. If it took me out of my element and I was able to sit down for nine hours and make some beats, man, give it to me. I was addicted to that, to that high. I thought, in a sense, I needed that to make another BMF or another Heart in the Pain. Those records that you just named, mm -hmm. did you make those records under a certain type of drug? Yeah. In yeah. a concerted effort to get his life back on track, Lex moved back home to be more present with his family. But the fast-paced lifestyle from before would stay with Lex for a while. He did gigs here and there, but he was still struggling with addiction. Relax, Mike. Mike Will, nigga. Mike Will, nigga. Mike Will, nigga. Mike Wills. Get the fuck out of here, nigga. Don't fuck with these niggas. Niggas ain't my friends, nigga. Mike Will got that 18 nigga making beats for him, bro. You fuck with these niggas. What they gonna do? They can't touch me. Lex was sued by Curtis Mayfield Estate for using Curtis Mayfield's music for a sample on a song that way with Wale and Rick Ross. Def Jam was supposed to handle that side of the business and didn't, leaving Lex to figure it out. The That Way record had a sample in it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a Curtis Mayfield sample. So Curtis Mayfield and them reached out years later. We want a piece of the, we want a piece of this record. We're suing him. Mm. They garnished all my royalties. And at Twitter ran about Waka Flocka's mom, Deb Anthony. Lex started to notice that his management from before may have not been in his best interest when he signed with them on his rise. I've tried to contact you, Deborah Anthony, so many times. All I ask for is what I'm owed. This has been going on for five years and I kept my mouth shut. Shit got bad, bro. Like Man, management sucks, bro. Like, managers really suck ass, bro. Except my boy PJ. But, man, my last manager was taking my publishing royalties, bro. I mean, my producer royalties, bro. Had me in a fucked up deal. Like, trying to get me to do love and hip hop, you know, to make up for the money that they were stealing from me. A lot of the producers from before who were under him and were inspired by his work started to rise and honestly surpass him. And due to the pills, Lex would lash out online, sparking a feud with Southside. Did a nigga not give you a chance to be a, 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 a CEO of NOA Mafia, bro? Yes. What you did, bro? What you say? Yes. You was good. You was focusing on Lex Luger. During this time period, the addiction got so bad, he was checked into a psych ward four times to deal with his addiction. The last check in saved his life. The continuous loop of making beats and pills had 
Lex's brain so twisted that when he checked into the hospital, he sat down in a chair and did motions with his hands as if he was in the studio. He would choose sobriety after that. Man, and um, it was a good like three, four days where I was just stuck. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of stuck and they had to like put me back in the mode of getting up and making the bed, brushing my teeth, getting dressed, you know, taking a shower, eating food. Like, they really had to help me get back to that point. That shit was real. Uh, my mother came and saw me maybe two days, three days in there, and I didn't know she was. Like, I really didn't know. Um, I was sitting down, like, at the tables, like, walking around the hospital, just sitting down at the tables, like, rolling up weed. But there was no weed, there was no blunts. <laughs> Uh, just making beats on an invisible computer. Like, my, my mind had become like a, a loop, continuously doing the same shit every day. The many Twitter and live stream rants had Lex seeking out forgiveness from sour relationships. He patched things up with Southside, Dam, and Walker. Him and Southside go back and forth still to this day, but at a certain period, they patched it up. The last time Lex charted was in 2016 on a song Champions by Kanye West. It seems once he started to struggle publicly, most of the industry backed away from him. Once you do them wrong, you're asked out. That's, you're not with them anymore. And they tell the folks around them to not fuck with you. And I felt like I've been blackballed from hip hop, not any other genre, just hip hop music to like, yo, don't do that with him because he's this way or he's that way or, you know, I don't really know, you know what I'm saying? But I would reach out to people and get a certain response or get no response at all. I'd be like, damn, bro, that's what niggas mean by blackball. That's what they talking about. Today, he's making a concerted effort to put his production back out there. Recently doing a project with Juicy J and working with a few underground artists. I'm fucking back, bitch. Yeah, stone is night. Ah, I'm fucking happy as hell, man. More plaques on the way. Three things went bad in the career of Lex Luger. One, the lack of guidance given to a 19, 20-year-old with all that success is one of the examples of how predatory the music industry can be. Two, if he bought into the idea of being the head of 808 Mafia, he could have lessened his workload and be properly credited for his contribution to trap music. You could really argue that a lot of people took his formula and just evolved it. And three, letting people trick him out of spot with the criticism that his beat sounded the same. It's okay to find your niche sound and be at peace with that. They only had that critique once he was at the top. With that being said, if you like this video, I appreciate y'all so much. And if you hate this video and you hate Lex Luger, I mean, that's fine too. Just make sure to dislike, but subscribe. I go by the name of Round Butter. And I'm DJ Hustle Nomics. It's definitely a drill. Why don't you my trouble? Hey, hey. I'm gonna beat him like his father.